Hi, I would like to post this video. It's not something I normally do, but I saw um, Inspiring Philosophy talk online about something that's really uh, one of my interests. Uh, and he was claiming something that seems to be completely false. He said that quantum physics debunks realism. That's not true. And so I'm going to try to explain, not to take sides and not to be nasty to anyone. I'm just going to try and explain why his argument fails. His argument, as I understood it, goes like this. The following experiments are incompatible with at least some aspects of realism. The observation of Bell's inequalities, Leggett inequalities, delayed choice experiments, and the Koch and Schrecker theorem. Since uh, realism is contradicted so much by experiment, therefore IP claims that realism is not compatible with quantum mechanics and idealism may well, is true. I certainly don't agree with this argument for the very simple reason that I don't agree with the premise that uh, realism is incompatible with any of those experiments. And the reason why I don't agree with that is because I know of a realistic theory which gives the exact same predictions for each of those uh, experiments as quantum mechanics does. And that theory is called Bohmian mechanics. And so what is Bohmian mechanics? Well, it was first presented by Louis de Broglie in 1927 at the Solvay Conference, and it was worked on by David Bohm, and he presented his results in 1952. It comes in basically two parts. The first part is the wave function. Like in uh, most descriptions of quantum mechanics, the wave function plays a very important role. It's not local. It extends over all space and doesn't act like a particle. In fact, it evolves according to the Schrodinger equation. The second part of the uh, theory involves particles, and these particles are almost classical. They don't have trajectories that look particularly classical, but the uh, particles have a definite position, and they fo follow a deterministic path, and they have a deterministic speed. The path of the that the particles follow is completely determined by the wave function. Once you know the wave function, you can determine the path of the particles, and I have included the equation to do that here. Let me show you how this works. Here is the double slit experiment in the de Broglie bohm picture. On the right you can see the trajectories being traced out and on the left you can see the potential and the wave function which are guiding the particles. As you can see the particles are clumping together in exactly the way that you would expect uh, from an interference experiment and so the outcomes of de Broglie bohm uh, theory look exactly like what you actually see when you do the experiment. And you can do this in all sorts of different situations. You could do it for hydrogen atoms, you can do it for when someone is, you know, um, sending a, a particle through one slit or the other slit, or when there's an observation, and again and again they come out consistent with what we actually observe and consistent with the predictions given by quantum mechanics. So Bohmian mechanics is it's a non-local hidden variable theory, and I want to be clear that it retains realism. The particles have a definite position. Probabilities just arise in the theory because we're not quite we're not if we're not sure at the beginning which uh, trajectory a particle is following, we're not sure exactly where it will go and where it will strike, say the screen in the double slit experiment. It's explicitly not relativistic, so it doesn't apply to cases which involve relativity. Um, it's a counterexample which disproves many of the claims that you hear about uh, hidden variables being impossible or that realistic theories are impossible. Um, when you hear the claims like that, think Bohmian mechanics because often they will disprove what the person is saying. And like so many uh, interpretations of quantum mechanics, the observer and consciousness play no particular role in the theory.
And so you're at a bit of a dilemma. You've had, I've said that Bohmian mechanics is a realistic theory, which gives the same results of quantum mechanics, and IP has claimed that there aren't such theories. And so let's look at IP's arguments. Well, the first thing he says is that this experiment, or uh, the violation of Bell's inequalities, uh, rules out at least some versions of locality, and he's right in that. But the uh, violation of Bell's inequalities rules out local hidden variable theories. And of course, we've just said that Bohmian mechanics is a non-local hidden variable theory. And more than that, um, John Bell himself was actually glowing about um, David Bohm's theory. And he was even uh, aware of it when he wrote the paper, and in fact it was the inspiration for this paper. He says, Moreover, a hidden variable interpretation of elementary quantum theory, 5, that's Bohmian mechanics, has been explicitly constructed. That particular interpretation has indeed a grossly non-local structure. This is characteristic, according to the result provided here, of any such theory which would reproduce exactly the quantum mechanical predictions. So what Bell is saying here is that not that there cannot be a realistic description of quantum mechanics. No, it's just that any realistic description of quantum mechanics has to be non-local in the way that Bohmian mechanics is also non-local. So that certainly didn't rule out Bohmian mechanics, uh, and in fact might even be seen as support for it. The second uh, experiment that he looked at was this one. Uh, this is the violation of Leggett's inequalities, which are similar to Bell's inequalities, only they rule out a slightly different class of theories, this time non-local realistic theories. So do these ones apply, does this experiment actually apply to Bohmian mechanics? Well, no, and again, if he'd read the paper, he would have noticed that they make this point absolutely clear. It is clear that other class of non-local theories, other than ones than this paper applies to, are possibly even fully compliant with all quantum mechanical predictions might exist. And it goes on to highlight one particular case of this. A specific case deserving comment is Bohm's theory and, go, and describes why uh, Bohm's theory uh, is not ruled out by this experiment. If you don't accept the experimenter's view, maybe you expect, accept the theorist's view. This is what Anthony Leggett had to say. Since the predictions of the Bohmian pilot wave model are by construction identical to those of quantum mechanics, it presumably cannot reproduce the predictions of that model either. And so um, his uh, inequalities simply do not apply to the Bohmian pilot wave model. Um, and notice here what he's saying. He's saying that Bohmian mechanics gives identical uh, predictions to that of quantum mechanics. Let's turn to the third uh, um, experiment, and that's the violation of the Cochrane. Beckon theorem. Um, this is applying to a single um, system and it has to do with contextuality. Uh, I'll just read you what Lucien Hardy has to say. The Cochrane-Specker theorem shows that non-contextual hidden variable interpretations of quantum theory are impossible. This does not mean, however, that hidden variable theories or realistic theories are not possible. In fact, the Bohm model is just such a theory. We show by considering an example involving interferometers how the Bohm model is contextual, thus circumventing the Cochrane-Specker theorem. And so Cochrane-Specker theorem simply doesn't apply to Bohm's model. And why doesn't it apply? It apply, doesn't apply because Bohm's model is uh, a, a contextual theory. And we could go on and on and on 
with IP presenting it, an experiment that he thought ruled out um, you know, realistic theories and I could go on working out and showing or hunting down the papers which show that it was, there is one and that one is Bohmian Mechanics. And that would get boring after a while and I think it already has, so I'm just going to say at this point that you can show that they give the same results. If the initial configuration, that is Q of T naught, is chosen with the same probability as you get from quantum mechanics, psi squared at time naught, then the configuration, Q of T, at any other time is has the same probability density as quantum mechanics called quantum mechanics predicts psi of T squared. And so if you've got two theories which predict exactly the same thing, you're not going to be able to rule out Bohmian mechanics unless you also violate uh, quantum mechanics. And so every single one of the experiments described by IP as disproving realism is actually comp compatible with a realist interpretation of quantum mechanics, namely it's compatible with Bohmian mechanics. And so we have no reason at all, certainly not an experimental reason, to uh, reject realist interpretations of quantum mechanics. And so we can safely say that this claim... Not only is materialism incompatible with quantum mechanics, but so is realism. ...is actually false. Realism is not incompatible with quantum mechanics. Of course, that doesn't prove or disprove whether we should take a realistic view of quantum mechanics. Um, it simply says that they are compatible, and they are compatible because Bohm, back in 1952, constructed a realist theory that is compatible with quantum mechanics. Now, that's pretty much all I have to say. The argument obviously doesn't follow because the premises that um, IP used are completely false. Um, and I'm not out to get IP. I think that if he didn't take such a um, hard line, I'd say, and claim you know, things which are really quite dodgy, like that a consciousness causes collapse, we could have a really interesting conversation about the role of information in quantum mechanics um, and so on. Um, but, you know... The, he, he's actually just going uh, way, way too far here. Certainly quantum mechanics does not do what he claims. It does not rule out realism. And I hope that people watching this video learn uh, I'm not out to get you. I'm just trying to point out uh, some little bit of truth to you.